What is up ninjas? My name is Sam Roll. So today I got a message from uh, another guy named Francisco. So you guys know my name is Francisco. And in that question he is asking how do I push stuff to the back of the mix? How do I push stuff to the front of the mix? And if you love me, if you love our names, then you better make a tutorial on this. Well, I really love the name Francisco, so you gave me no choice. Now creating depth in the mix is a super important thing that I feel everyone making music in any genre of music should know. And creating depth in the mix can create nice little elements that when people hear your music in high quality monitors or high quality speakers, they're gonna start to discover little things in your track like wow I never noticed that screaming girl in the back oh my god now guys, there are going to be four ways that you can control depth of your mix, aka if you want something in the front, or you want something in the back, or you want something in the middle. Now the four things that will increase depth in your mix, guys, are pretty simple, and that is going to be volume, reverb, delay, and frequencies, okay? So if you were like me, and you were out on vacation, and you screamed at the mountain, Hey, what's that? It's better than that film studio! Fuck you, F.O. You ain't got shit! As you guys heard my words of wisdom there, first off the volume was a bit quieter and that's why it sounded like that scream came from farther away. The next thing is there was reverb and delay of course because it's a big mountain and you're getting that reverb and that delay reflection back. So that's another reach there. And the next thing is that the frequency as I screamed and the mountain screamed back at me to say you're damn right Seth. Um, you can hear that the reflection or that, that thing that came back at me that sounded farther away didn't have as much high frequencies as my initial voice. So those are the four things that we can use and I have a track here that I've been working on for some time now. Um, that I really like and I'm gonna use it as an example to show you guys how to use these four things to create depth in your mix So if you guys are ready to get into it, let's do it man And as always guys if you guys want to support my channel make sure to check out evilsounds.com for all my sound design work uh, A lot of you guys support that stuff and a lot of you guys have been asking for sales And there is a sale coming up and it's gonna be on Cyber Monday probably Black Friday and Cyber Monday combined So make sure to check that out and let's get straight into this tutorial all right, fam, so welcome inside of Ableton, all right? So pretty much here we have a track I have, and throughout the song we have this really nice chord that happened. All right, now throughout the guitar, um, there's a guitar that comes in right here. Now, creating depth in the mix is more 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 than just creating like kind of landscaping the song. Like you want something to sound more in the back. Sometimes you might have something that comes in the song that you wanted to take the the attention. So creating depth to the chords, pushing them back in the mix is crucial because if I leave them in the front as I have them right now, you're gonna see that the guitar and the chords start to fight. So how, how would I go about in pushing the chords to the back of the mix in this situation? Well, here we're going to be using two things. We're going to be using volume and as well as the frequency. Now, when you hear something farther away, a lot of the times the higher frequencies don't tend to reach you. I don't know the explanation of that. What I do know is that usually lower frequencies take a longer time to develop. So the wavelengths on lower frequencies tend to be a lot longer. So maybe that's why when someone screams for far away, you don't really hear the high frequencies as much as the uh, mid lows, the mids and the lows. So that's the one thing we can do to push us to the back is going to be to get this low. So here I have the synth. And all I have to do is automate this down here to maybe lower volumes here so that it kind of sounds farther away. So now if we hear that with the guitar, and let's just go with the guitar. It's, it's a loop around here. There we go. So you can see when the highs are in, the sound sounds in the front. But when we do that little reducement there to the to the cutoff of the synth, so we make it like lower so it doesn't have that much highs, it kind of works a bit better. Okay. Now, the other thing too is the volume is maybe it's still a tad bit too loud. So we can add automation to that so that it goes down here just a tiny bit. Okay. 
So that can easily help us in creating that depth so that the chords just get placed a little bit proper. The chords get pushed to the back of the mix. Now here we didn't use reverb or delay even though the synth does have a bit of reverb going into it. Uh, we focus more on the frequency and the volume aspect of it. So if you um, have a, like a couple of layers of sounds playing together and you want one layer to stand out above the rest, what you can do is to cut out some of the highs or lower the volume on them. Pretty simple, right? But that's something that people don't know. They don't know that in order to push stuff to the front or to the back of the mix, you can use volume, which is the, the, the simplest thing I understand, but it's that kind of idea that not a lot of people know about it. Um, the next thing is also the frequencies uh, as you lower that down. So if you're doing sound design for a movie or if you're doing sound design for like a a video game and you're deciding sounds you're going to mix them appropriately like if the sound is played so far from this character uh there's going to be less highs and vice versa okay um that's the thing that we can do here okay now the next thing is reverb and delay let's say that in our breakdown here We want to have drums, so we don't want the drums from the drop that sounds so in front of us, so in front of the mix. For instance, what I mean by that is if we just... So here what we're going to do is we're going to use frequency and reverb to push this to the back of the mix a bit more. So I still want the drums, but I don't want them to be so in the front. So first thing I'm going to do is mess with this EQ8 here. What I'm going to do is get rid of the lows in the break. I don't want that. So that's the first thing that I'm going to kind of target there. Okay. So we're going to do that here. Just very easily just have it there. So it's more. But the problem is it still sounds in front of the mix, obviously. So again, using frequency, we can kind of decrease some of these. And finally, in order to cement this effect even more here, because again, the drums just have too much transients, the dynamics on them are just like, uh, we don't want that. So reverb, I call it the, the pussify effect. <laughs> if you use reverb tastefully and you know how to um, approach it, um, you can definitely get these drums to sound more in the back of the mix. What I recommend you guys do is you have your input processing, which is just an EQ that's gonna EQ the drums as they come into the reverb. And we're just gonna target the mids here. So let's solo that. Now, we do want to use a higher size because a higher size won't allow the high frequencies to come out as much. If I have a lower size, you can see it produces a lot of uh, reflections with a lot of more upper harmonics on them, upper frequencies. So higher size is a key bet there. Lower the decay. Here on the high diffusion network, we're going to do this. There we go. So now if we hear that together in the song. Now if I get rid of. Okay, so as we put this reverb, you can see a couple of things are happening. First off, the sound is getting pretty much masked by it. Think of it as sort of like when you're screaming and you put your hand over your mouth and now you go, Ooh! Um, you know, it's kind of like a mask like that to it. But at the same time, that creates the effect. It sells the effect that the drums are in the back somewhere in some cave, you know, inside of FL's cave or something. But you get the idea there with that. Um, and it really does help because we can use this stuff to just push stuff to the back of the mix, move it to the front of the mix and whatnot. That's why it's very important that when you guys are making drop leads or when you want something to be in front of the mix, you don't drown it in reverb because that's something a lot of people do. They'll drown their reverb, uh, their vocals in reverb. They'll drown their leads in reverb and they'll push a lot of stuff back in the mix and last thing we need to talk about is the delay of course and delays you can use them to create again that sense of depth so what we're gonna do is just use a standard ping pong delay here and you're gonna see what it does instantly if i turn this ping pong off now if i turn it off It's like you're saying goodbye to the ping pong delay because it's getting delayed. Um, so then you get that effect there and it kind of gets pushed to the back of the mix just a tad bit more. A lot of mixing engineers, what they'll do is they'll use reverb and ping pong delay together as an effect to create that depth in their song.
All right, so those are going to be ways to use death, guys. And again, this is more than just about using it in a song like this. If you're making future bass and you have these vocals chops or vocals runs that you want to be in the back of the mix, now you know how to do it. If you want, you know, if you have a drop, big room drop, and you have this drum hit that comes in really hardcore and you want to push it to the back of the mix, lower the fucking volume. I think that is self-explanatory. If you want to drown in a reverb, go for it, but I don't suggest it because it does lose a bit of power. But that's going to be more of a volume thing. And finally, guys, the last tip, and this is going to be a bonus tip for you guys, and this is something that I didn't add to the four things in the beginning of the video just because it's kind of like my own idea of it. But if you want to push something back to the mix, to the back of the mix, what you can do is just mono it. And that's something that, you know, is going to be more towards the stereo field of something because check it out. If I mono this sound right now, the the, the Juno 106, uh, do, 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 it's going to sound a little bit more to the back of the mix. Okay, and, th and the reason for that, and I still have yet to find a, a legit explanation that I can comfortably make a video on. So my explanation here is that there's this thing called the pan law. And usually when you start panning to the left or to the right, there's an increase in volume. So the DAWs, when you're panning, they boost. So when we're in stereo, I think the DAW is kind of making up for it and making it sound louder in the stereo signal. Again, I'm talking out of my ass here because I really don't know what's going on. But what I find is that if I want something to be more in the front of the mix and I think it will sound good in stereo, I leave it in stereo. But let's I want something to sound tighter and a little bit more in the back of the mix, then we can use something like mod to push it to the So again, I can't explain that again, but it does help a lot. But anyways, guys, that's going to be the video. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope you understand how to push stuff to the front of the mix, to the back of the mix. We mainly talked about pushing stuff to the back of the mix, but the thing is, is that if you do the opposite of what we're talking about and pushing stuff to the back of the mix, then that's how you get stuff to the front of the mix. So the key thing is to push certain elements in your talk to the back of the mix so that that one thing that stays in the front unaltered sounds like it's in the front, okay? And I think that's all I have to say. I hope that you guys got a lot from this video. Again, this is something I've been wanting to talk about, and it took one guy named Francisco to make me make the video. And you guys have a good one, guys. You guys take care and have fun producing, have fun adding depth to your mixes now, and uh, peace out.